rare and special type of uh, unwanted pattern of fracture, or so-called unexpected fracture. Uh, so here is the outline. I will start it by presenting the uh, Chang'eng technique first, and then present the case through the analysis of the cause and the suggested treatment, and finally the discussion. Uh, we know the history of uh, such loss-free osteotomy. There is a gradual evolution. So in the past, basically, it's a um, kind of a horizontal oblique fracture located at the subcondylar region uh, in about 1950s. And we know that uh, Dr. Obigazer, he proposed the so-called sagittal split procedure by doing a only located at the ramus region. Uh, he extend a bit longer the uh, horizontal cut and uh, sorry. And uh, gradually the split extend uh, forward to the vertical portion of the mandible body. Uh, so you, you know in, in uh, Dr. Dapong, he gradually extend the, the split into the body portion of the mandible. And I think bas basically there are three uh, elements of sagittal split osteotomy the horizontal cut, the sagittal cut, and the vertical cut. Uh, I know some surgeons use some alternative terms like medial, lateral, or vertical osteotomy, but basically I, I think the horizontal cut located on the ramus, and then from the horizontal cut, you uh, do a sagittal cut connecting from ramus uh, to the angle to the body, and then finally the vertical cut located at the mandible body. So this is the basic three components of such top split. And we know Dr. Hansak actually do a bit modification in the development of such top split osteotomy. He proposed an incomplete cut located at uh, mandible ramus and also uh, along the mandible body. So basically it's an, a weak point located at the lingual surface of the mandible. So this differentiates, uh, in, uh, this is the difference in between so-called obligator type or Hansak type osteotomy. So here we show you a short video clip that demonstrate the skill that we use here in Chang'eng. So uh, we start from the horizontal ramus shaving first and from anterior to the posterior. And uh, theoretically the weak point, you should go beyond the lingula or beyond the mandibular foramen. And then we do our so-called sagittal cut from the ramus to the angle and to the body of usually located around the first molar region, the most anterior part. And for the vertical cut, basically you need to know that you, you need to do a bit aggressively to include the lingual surface or inferior border. And then it's a gradual uh, tapping use osteotome, gradually deepen your osteotomy. And then here is the final step of uh, make sure the complete cutting behind the mandibular foramen. And then uh, another cut in the body. And then we will gradually open up the, the fracture. So here you see the muscle is so-called medial pterygoid muscle. So this is basically the technique we propose and we do every day here in Chang'eng. Uh, the important thing is that uh, there is a medial, so-called medial pterygoid muscle. You see the anatomy here. It's uh, actually ori origin from the uh, lateral pterygoid plate and then insert on the medial surface of mandible angle. Uh, we believe that when, when you do 
uh, many bone movement, the distal segment is the, the portion of bone that you want to do a three-dimensionally free movement. Uh, so you just imagine there are four pairs of uh, mastication muscle and uh, the lateral pterygoid, the masseter, the temporalis muscle. Basically, uh, when you complete a sexual split, these two pairs of muscle is, uh, is already we use an, an illustration to to show you that uh, the difference between so-called observer type anatomy and uh, the Osteotomy. So when you, uh, the left hand side is the over time, the right, right hand side is the, the Hansak type. Uh, so basically, you know the medial pterygoid muscle insertion. So when you are able to do the so called Hansak type osteotomy, basically you can minimize the amount of medial pterygoid muscle insertion to the distal segment. So that's the, the core concept of our. Uh, why we choose Hansak type osteotomy? Because uh, we believe in this type of osteotomy, you may uh, decrease the muscle pulling from the, the medial pterygoid muscle. So we achieve, we basically believe that we, we can achieve better skeletal stability, especially when you do a big amount of manipulative movement. So here is the case. Actually, this is a case that I operate with Professor Ray Chen on um, year 2014. And it's a, a two-jaw surgery for a 42-year-old female. She was diagnosed with a skeletal class three, uh, mainly with a manipulative asymmetry. And we do a mixed uh, row and row to correct the asymmetry and the pitch for calcite rotation. For the mandible, because the major asymmetry comes from the mandible, we do a big setback on the right side and a two millimeter advancement on the left side. And it occurred that actually this is the first time I encounter uh, an unwanted pattern of sexual split. It's located on the right side of the mandible. Uh, so you see this is uh, the three a reconstructed 3D image from the patient's uh, combined CT one week after surgery. So on the right hand side is the image. So at, at that time I call for Professor Chen's help and he take a look and then we determine that we just uh, leave it there. And I, I think I try my best to uh, try to dissect uh, along the angle region and a bit to the lingual surface uh, to release some of the muscle attachment to the distal segment. So we leave the angle on the distal segment and we do rigid fixation. And after surgery, we don't need uh, any uh, IMF. And luckily the patient recovered quite well. And uh, uh, when, when I reviewed the, the chart, I found that actually she debunked uh, 7.5 months after surgery. The orthodontic was Professor Huang. And this is a surgery first approach. Uh, so from post-up serial CT uh, combined image that you can look at the, the arrow indicates the region of the, the manipulative angle and the, the ramus region that uh, still connect to the distal segment. So in our regular way of so-called Hansak type osteotomy, this portion of bone should be attached to the proximal segment. So from the coronal view, again, you see uh, uh, gradually, so the, the, the last number shows means the the posterior portion of the ramus. So if you move forward, you see the, the serial number increase. And uh, uh, you see from the image that basically I should create a weak point on the lingual surface of the manipulative angle. And not, not like this, that I create a, a weak point on the 
inferior uh, buccal surface of the mandible. For left side, actually, is uh, our uh, preferred way of so-called Hansa type osteotomy. You, you can see basically there is a big difference in the direction of the, the sagittal cut. So on the left hand side, the, the tilting was a bit uh, from upside down and a bit tilting toward the lingual surface. Basically, I think this is a preferred way of a sagittal cut. So they, I, later I will show another figure to explain this. So for a serial cephalometric image, the left hand side is before surgery, you see a, a, a very a severe mandible deviation to the left. And uh, in the middle is one week after and uh, the right hand side was 7.5 months after. Uh, basically, I think uh, the skeletal stability looks uh, quite acceptable. So from the lateral view, you see the discrepancy in the occlusal plane and the, the mandibular lower border before surgery. And uh, uh, one, one week after and the, the day when the patient was debunked, you see uh, basically the sagittal is, looks still quite stable. So uh, I think both the patient and uh, from our point of view, we are satisfied with the outcome. So, uh, luckily, this patient is quite fine for the whole process. So you may you may consider actually this uh, fracture is not important at all because uh, this this fracture doesn't uh, connect it with with the 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 condyle. There is not a subcondyle fracture that you need an an extra type of of. Uh, rigid fixation. So we just do our regular rigid fixation like we do uh, for the normal case. So uh, I will do some analysis of the cause. Basically, you can say there could be some anatomic factor. So I found another case, but I'm not showing the, the after surgery image. I just show the the before surgery image for this, uh, uh, this is another case, but, but basically you can see the, the bone is, uh, the, the bone is quite so-called inward curved. So you just imagine if you do a sagittal cut uh, very straight from anterior posteriorly, you may create a similar pattern of fracture like uh, I did for the, the case I present today. And uh, personally, I will still consider when we do a, a Hansak type osteotomy, a very thick lingual cortex is some factor that's not easy to, to achieve the, the fracture pattern that I want. And of course, uh, when I look back at uh, five years ago when I do the surgery, uh, I think uh, for the 42 year old female, I, I can feel that actually her bone, bone is really hard. And hard is, is not a problem, but the bone is quite brittle. So comparing to relatively young adults, like in the age of 20, usually the bone is elastic. So uh, you will need to be take an extra uh, caution when you are doing surgery, when for someone the bone quality is strong and brittle, that's my suggestion. Uh, but uh, when I look back the pre-surgical image of the this case I present, you see basically I don't think this is a difficult anatomy. You see the space between the mandibular foramen to the buccal cortical plate. Actually, there is a, a big space. Uh, you may only say that okay the bone looks strong so so basically i don't think anatomic is a, a factor in this case it could be just an excuse for my problem <laughs> and so here I, I think the more important thing is that uh, technical factors the direction of the your horizontal and sagittal you should control your direction and uh, during the splitting process, uh, we use power instrument to create V point in the first beginning. And then we try to create a fracture line that we want 
by using chisels or using osteotomes. Uh, when you are using the osteotome, tries to use a control force, not overt force. And the separation, theoretically, should be a gradual, gradual separation instead of an abrupt split. So I think that's the factor. And for this case, you just look, just comparing with the left hand side is the case today, and the right hand side is I select from some other case. So here shows you the favorable direction and the unfavorable direction. So the left hand side is relatively an unfavorable direction that the sagittal cut is somehow a bit tilting uh, buckly or a bit tilting outward. And then it's easy that you fracture uh, like the pattern I create. And then for the most time, most um, for the most case, basically I want to create a fracture line like the right hand side. So basically considering the direction should be a bit tilting lingually, and then you create an adequate uh, lingual weak point, then you can create the, the fracture pattern that we prefer. Suggested management. So for this case, we basically leave it there. We don't, I just try to do some dissection from the buccal uh, surface of the bone. Uh, we still a bit uh, worry about the long-term stability. If, if the angle, the lingual angle still have medial pterygoid muscle pulling. So here I will suggest that next time if I encounter similar situation, I will try, uh, if I leave the bone there, I think a good way is that you can, uh, like imagine you, you extract a third molar, you create a, a retro molar incision. And then from that incision, you may dissect along the anterior surface of the retro molar region that's uh, uh, around the, the low ramus region. And then you may dissect, uh, lingually to release. So here on the right hand side, you, you see the, the, the link from the lingual surface of the manipal angle. So here I, I use a red color to, to locate the region that basically you may add a rich hormonal incision. You do some dissection below the lingula and uh, you may extend your incision to about second molar or first molar region, then basically you can dissect quite wide. So you can still free the medial pterygoid muscle without touch on that bone. So, but the only thing uh, with doing this, the other thing of, of uh, risk will be, uh, you just imagine if you have a full thickness mandible angle on your distal segment, when you do a big amount of mandible setback, there could be a backward protrusion of the mandible angle. So that, that's the only problem if, if you leave the bone there. The option two is a bit aggressive that I, I do several times. So uh, when I split this way, basically you can try cut out the angle with uh, oscillating saw. I mean, cut out the full thickness many mandible angle which remain with this tall segment with os with oscillating so so it will it will and then you dissect the muscle so the full thickness angle become a free bone graft and if if for today i'm doing mandible setback i will shave a bit the lingual part of the angle graft and then i will fix back the manipal angle with the proximal segment. So that's the option too, but it takes some time. You know, it takes, it, it during surgery, you may need to use the oscillating saw, take out the angle, shave the lingual surface, and you either use wire. So in this figure on the right-hand side, you see basically, uh, uh, this is not my case actually. I think this is done by EJ Chen. So he, he put another, uh, two hole plate to rigidly fix the free angle graft backward. 
So in this, if you're doing this, basically you try to remain the, the manifold angle, remain the contour of the manifold angle. There is another option, option three, that I've ever do for one case, but after that case, I will never do it again. So basically I don't suggest doing that. So for this case, look at the left-hand side of the post-up uh, panel. So you see there is a, you know, a bone loss from a subcondylar region to the, the about the angle body junction area on the left-hand side. So the left side, I create similar pattern of the fracture. And uh, it happened that the patient, before surgery, the patient is asking for some degree of manifold contouring. So I think at that time, I think it's fine. Just, just take it out. So we take the left side angle, I cut it and take it out. And then for the right side, we, we, we don't do a best split, but the angle located on proximal segment. So we try to, to shave the bone on the right hand side. But you see actually the contour of the unexpected fracture, the left side is not a good contour. So end up the, the patient lost the, the jawline definition. So basically I will never do this again, because the patient will lose the jawline. Even if the patient asks for angle resection, I think I will still go back to like option two or option one that you try to shave, uh, do a control shaving of the mandible angle. Not like this, this is not a controlled uh, mandible contouring at the same time. So I will not suggest uh, doing this. Okay, so I think this is the end of my, uh, my presentation and then we can have some discussion. And before that, I will show here again that we, we have, uh, today I invite some friends. I, I, I'm not sure if they are coming, but basically here in Chang'an, we form a Facebook, uh, face, Facebook group, so-called International Craniofacial Chang'an webinar. And then uh, we will periodically have some uh, web meeting like today. So it, the frequency will be twice per month. There will be five different topics. So if for those uh, who have interest in the craniofacial surgery or some orthodontic parts, uh, please uh, forward the information of our Facebook uh, group to your friends. And then now I think we can start the discussion part of today's presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yao. So I think the all the audience can have a lot of uh, information today. So if you have any questions that you can type your questions in our chat room, and uh, I can open your voices and uh, you can you can hand on your uh, your question to Dr. Yao. So I think uh, if you have any question, you can you can follow my uh, my suggestion. So I think the first of all, I have one question for Dr. Yao. Okay, Dr. Yao, uh, thank you for your presentation today. Yes. <laughs> So I think the unfavorable resulting of the such toe splitting osteotomy is always our nightmare. Uh, even once when we do like this uh, in our uh, daily practice. So uh, I have one question for you. So do you have experienced uh, uh, once once you have this kind of unfavorable splitting, so how do you figure out to maybe is to refix? You using the wiring or you using the plating? And if you using the plating, what is you uh, you will make a new incision or you, you will make a external uh, facial incision for this kind of fixation for the plating? So what is your suggestion? Uh, actually, unfavorable fracture. Is a really, uh, uh, I think it's it's something that we we may have a lot of time to discuss. And then, uh, I think first of all, uh, B 
before mention about the fixation technique, I will, uh, I will say that when 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 you re really encounter that something unexpected, first first of all, you should make sure you uh, make sure that uh, you do you really separate your teeth bearing portion from your condom. That's the most important. The, the, I think that's the first step. When you, you can't encounter some split that's not correct. So uh, in in the in the situation I present today, it's 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 not a problem because uh, just we just left a big angle on the distal segment. So it's it's not a problem, but I, I have encountered uh, like once or twice some situation that you you may create a, a really big uh, fragment. Okay, I think everyone can see my screen, so I can show you some <laughs> figure that you know what I'm saying. So everyone can see this, right? Let me see. Okay, do you see this? Yes. Okay, so I think I think this is different situation that um, they, 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 I, I believe because I, I don't do this but but I, I just review I saw some I, I don't it's I'm not a surgeon but I, I, I can just imagine that for this type of fracture basically you fracture from uh, sigmoid notch down to the lower border of the mandible body or ankle body junction so it become a free free segment of a coronoid, coronoid process and the uh, ramus body complex. It's a free seg, I think, I believe it's a, a fracture of this free segment first. However, I believe the condyle will be still attached to the distal segment, okay? So for this type of fracture, you when you create a big free coronoid fragment, uh, you are not separating the distal from the condyle. So the first step, I'm, I'm going to mention that the first step here will be you need to try make a, not some other weak point that you separate the condyle from the distal segment first. And then this is another um, answer for uh, Dr. Zhou's question that uh, somehow if so, so for this case, you need to separate condyle from distal segment. And then now you have, a, so after you separate, you have a quite freely movable proximal segment. So you can basically elevate the proximal segment forward. Then you can relatively easy do a rigid fixation of the big uh, anterior free fragment to the condyle segment. So in this situation, uh, uh, I, I, I think most of the time I use wire first. And then if there are some remaining space, I can put a uh, play and screw. Uh, but sometimes I only put uh, like three, um, uh, 23 French wire. You, you, know, you know the wire has, difference in size. I choose stronger one. So it will be about uh, 23 gauge or 23 French. Yes. So uh -huh. for the, I, I think three will be enough. Two maybe, <laughs> two maybe not, two wire maybe not enough. But, but if you are able to put some place school, that's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Yao. So uh, we have the several question uh, so far, so probably we can uh, probably we could not answer all the the, the question tonight. So I think before uh, a half hours later, we will collect all the residual, all the lasting questions, and uh, probably Dr. Yao can answer the question in our uh, Facebook later. So I think the first question is that for Dr. Yao uh, from Chuqin, uh, she asked, "Can I, uh, could I ask?" You mentioned one of the anatomic factor that can contribute to unfavorable fracture is 
brittle and the hard bone quality. Is there any ways to overcome it? Do you recommend more sharp cutting for cases like this, Dr. Yao? Hmm. I think for hard for hard bone, hard bone, you need to create enough weak point by the power instrument hard hard bone. So that will be something like. For hard bone, okay. For brittle bone, that you should do it gradually. <laughs> so it's a bit different. So, like, like, actually, like the video, video, you, you can look again. The video. This is really quick. So, basically, we take some, there, I can stop somewhere. Okay, we start from here. You shave the weak point gradually, and then you go, okay. So what's this? This is a further weakening or you are going to find out the, the marrow space. So this is uh, using some power instrument. If you feel the bone is really strong. And then here, here is going almost beyond the mandibular foramen, but you keep going, going a bit, okay, over. So here means that you, you are creating a, a real weak point using a power instrument. So for very hard bone, try to create a weak point using a power instrument. Not a very shallow groove, and then you directly you use a big osteotome, big or thick osteotome, chisel. That is, uh, that force where the, the hard bone I think for hard bone, you, you, you should create enough weak point before you use the osteotome. I think that's the easy point to avoid the, the unexpected fracture of the hard bone. Okay, so that's my answer. Thank you very much. And then is uh, some other question. Yeah, for the second question stuff from Alvin's. Uh, he asked, how and uh, what instrument do you use to complete the osteotomy at the distal segment after bed split? What kind of instrument? Yes. Uh, basically, we use either uh, three mm, most of the time we use three millimeter burr and to create some groove. And then you, if you can see very clearly, you create a groove first, and then you may use a, a, a reci reciprocating saw. And so, so just like I say, use, I usually use power instrument first to create um, weak point, weak enough that you can use um, osteotone. So I, I'm not going to do uh, use osteotome only. It's uh, to me it's dangerous. I will use power instrument, burr or saw first, and then till almost break, almost break. And you can use the osteotome to control the depression. Okay. Uh, we all okay. okay I'm, I I know why you are asking. We we don't really use the splitter or spreader. I know some surgeon will use the. Greater, right? We don't have that. Yes. Okay, so we go keep on the next question. The, uh, the question is that this is a common complication we call the teratis the split. The main reason is due to the inadequate cutting of the inferior cortex to the lingual side. Mm -hmm. Uh, so as the horizontal cut is not deep enough to make the split naturally. Uh, sometimes if we note this kind of a lateralis split, try to use a thin chisel to complete the lingual side split back to the original fracture track. Yeah, if you pass. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for uh, this all part participants' the suggestions. And uh, we go on the next. The next one is the, okay, 
you want to x once again how to cut the angle so what is your technique mm -hmm. <laughs> dr yao i mean when when i face uh, we need to make it clear that uh you are asking for that when, when I have when I have uh, this type of split, how I cut the angle, or you are asking that in our regular splitting, how do we take out the lingual cortex? On the lingual. I'm not sure. For, for this kind of situation, if I'm cutting the angle, I'll just make sure that where is the nerve canal and use the oscillating or to cut it but if you uh before the oscillating so you may create some point with this fur you need to take her and then you, you just connect the point using oscillating so and uh, for the for the the our regular splitting like uh, from the video the re regular splitting the final step will be uh, if for mandible setback, we will we will try. Okay, here. So you see, you are asking for the regular way that when we uh, complete our splitting here. Uh, uh, similarly, if I feel it's difficult using uh, our soul only, I will use swimming interpreter to create a proof and then I'll use the R soul to complete. Cut. You mean this is here? Here is another step of the angle cut. So, yes, I think that you have a good answer for the angles, the manipulations. So, uh, one more question is that: so, how to prevent the resorption? I think it's how to prevent the bone bone graft resorption of the unfavorable role, the bone graft. So what is your experience, Dr. Yao? Actually, I, this is a very good question. Anyway, I, I, I review, review uh, several this type of lecture. Actually, in preparation for this presentation, I, <laughs> I learned something. So uh, here is my, right, there are three, uh, three options, right? So I believe that for option one, the bone resorption is, we, you don't need to worry bone resorption. You just need to worry that if you do a big setback, it could be backward protrusion of the ankle, the bone won't resolve because the, it's a big piece with a good connection from lingual surface or of the the, the mandible. So so the, the circulation is no problem. For option two, yeah, I think that could be some degree of resorption. There could be some degree. So for this case, I I don't show here, but we can I don't I'm not sure if I remember the char number. There is some resorption for this case that are fixable. Actually, I create several of these, and uh, I don't think the follow up is long enough. But this is a long time. I think this, this for this case, where oh here, let's see. So it's the patient basically is also fast. It's also donated by Professor Huang. Though the total treatment time was. Uh, only nine nine months. So nine months after, okay, yeah, he see some resorption, right? Okay, so it's, it's a good question. It's a bonus for 
equate the rotation of this around the equation here. You see the difference? Uh, this is one week after, and this is nine, nine months after. And then actually the patient was defunct if there was no braces. So defunct at this stage, so we don't have further image to, to tell you uh, longer, longer follow up. But basically this is a free, free bone graph. So could be some degree of resorption. And for option three, of course, I don't suggest because you, you, you know you take out the bone in the first beginning. So when the bone is lost, it's lost. It won't, be, it won't grow back. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yao. So uh, I have one more question for you. Uh, in your experience or in your review of our OGS cases in Chang'an, uh, how do you think the, the unfavorable mandibular osteotomy fracture is easily happening in class two or is easily in happening in class three cases? What is your experience? Mm. Theoretically, theoretically, class three, I think it's the regular class three is easier to fracture. Um, I, I, I don't read too much. I don't read, I read, I read really cool literature. <laughs> I, I, I remember that uh, some surgeons considering class three uh, may have higher chance of unexpected fracture for class three. The, the concept is that the class three usually the bone is, is elongated, it's relatively narrow. And for class two, it, the AP dimension, vertical dimension, it can somehow decrease. So theoretically, the, the, width, the width of the mandible is, is more for class two and the width Class three is, is uh, the width in class three is less. So I mean the transverse dimension is larger for class two and smaller for class three. So that's the explanation of the, the class two and class three their relation is unexpected. But uh, somehow, how I, you see, look at the the, the figure here, the left hand side is the picture I create. Right hand side, the, the, the case is what I think the, 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 the fracture that we prefer. So the the width seem not to be a problem, right? <laughs> Technically, yes. it's a problem. So maybe someday you don't control the position of the cut. Uh, just I think just gradually, if you found something not to control, you just Try not to uh, just take your time. Don't, don't do it too fast. Okay. Okay, we have one more question in our chat rooms. Um, he asking, there is an unfavorable refractures. Do you <laughs> tell your patient to choose? <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, uh, because cur right now, uh, I think that's based on your practice. In our practice, we we try to okay. Oh, oh, she has something now. Oh, uh, <laughs> so basically, it it depends on your management. If uh, because in here we we met, we try our best uh, not doing any IMF after surgery, right? So we every time I encounter an unfavorable fracture, I will try my best to achieve a digital fixation. So basically, the post up the, the problem is the, the operation time is longer. So the post-op management will be similar. So I, I think except for 
because mo you know in my fixation way i don't i don't need an external wound for my mandible fixation but for an inspective fracture if i need an external wound usually it's a puncture wound that you, you need a choker to do the fixation i think i will tell the patient but 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 most of the time i i never tell the patient because i don't think it I don't think it's related. Long term follow up, uh, I, I found all the bone was healed quite well. So I, I don't think it's really necessary. And uh, the only thing happened during surgery just a prolong of the operation time. But if someday I encounter a fracture that I need an extra length of IMF after surgery, I think I will tell the patient, honestly. Because basically, I'm an honest surgeon. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Okay, the next question is that how do you ensure the lingual angulation instead of a buccal angulation of cut to avoid bed split? Yeah, on the inferior border of mandible. Mm -hmm. well, here again, we can how to ensure the lingual. Uh, actually, this uh, okay. We can show this now. I, I think take a look at the figure here. Basically, for the right left hand side, this is a simple. Actually, this is a simple sagittal split because the nerve is quite away from the buccal cortex. The marrow space is big. It's a big marrow space. So I don't know what happened because I'm a beginner at the time. I think. So. <laughs> Uh, so basically, this is not a problem. You just make a relatively thick cut, and a, a clue during surgery will be the clue during surgery will be you need to you can dissect the buccal surface. Then you look at the direction of the surface. Okay, so basically, cut whatever you. Whatever is your entry point, you just at least you should be parallel to the surface, okay? The buccal surface. So that basically parallel. But you, you if you for this case, I think I, I you can do a bit aggressive. Why? Because the nerve is away. So so it's it's the, the way I make sure the direction of a bit lingual tilting. So here it's here is actually a bit lingual tilting because it's gradually lingual tilting and then easily you can split to the, the way we want. So if there is some space in between, it's not a problem. Okay. I think this is my <laughs> direction. Yes. Okay. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Yeah, I think some of some of the audience want to say uh, hello and uh, pay his regard to Professor uh, Yu Rei Chen. I think the, our our mentor is online actually. Yeah, so you you can see Professor Yu Rei Chen is online with us. <laughs> oh, actually, I I need to share that uh, uh, the. Can we do something really relaxed here? I think basically the webinar is relatively relaxed. It's not to me. It's not very you know strict. So, so uh, basically, I think later on we we may invite some of you. You know who is online today? Okay, I will remember your name and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then you just could be. I think I'm doing an example. Of, I think it's a simple example that I find some case that you, something that whatever you want to speak, like, like I, what I'm doing today. So that could be a start. And then, of course, if, if you want to share some more thing that is quite academic or with a solid evidence, we, we also welcome. But for today, it's kind of a from a case that I, I, prevents, I, I present some of my thoughts. I present the, the way we do here in Changgeng. So we also want to hear from 
uh, I mean, different centers, because here is everyone from around the world to, to join our Facebook group. So, so I, I, we also want to hear from you, uh, your experience. I think your, everyone's daily practice may be very special to some other team around the world. So I think that's a very good thing that we can uh, uh, put together here in the webinar here. And then hope, hopefully someday, I think if, if more and more people come in, then we, we, we may invite some, uh, you know, big names here in, in, in OGS then to, to have some presentation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Yao's uh, uh, instructions. And uh, if there is no any uh, questions to, for Dr. Yao, yeah, I think the, today is the, our international Chang'an cranial facial webinar, I think it's uh, finished. And uh, I would like to invite all of you to join our next webinar, uh, should be two weeks later. The next webinar's topic it will be focusing on the fat grafting and uh, will be uh, guided by Professor Frank Chan. So later on, our topic and the speaker will be released in our Facebook, just like the, the Dr. Yao showing on the screen. So please focus on our, our update and keep you posted. So thank you very much for all of you as participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.那我們就登出了。用登出,我來結束就可以了。那你,那你這樣,我們這樣子的內容你會在post上去啊。我剛把它錄下來了,所以你如果OK的話就可以把它放在那個那個webinar那個Facebook上面,我們有record下來,其實